let's take a look at the process of ovulation. What you know from what we just looked at in, in producing the eggs themselves, we know that the process of meiosis doesn't finish unless we have a fertilized egg that is going to become a small human. However, we also know that there are 500,000 um, primary oocytes just chilling in your ovaries, chilling in your ovaries and experiencing everything that you are experiencing, which is why our uh, eggs can get old because everything that you do, everything you eat, all the chemicals you imbibe, all the poisons that you do, quit smoking, all of that stuff, even though you think, oh, I'll quit smoking when I have a kid, well, all of that stuff is affecting your ovaries, and it's affecting those cells that are frozen in meiosis, and the longer you expose them to all sorts of gnarly chemicals and what have you, the more likelihood there is to do some damage to those cells, to those egg cells and it increases the risk of um, various genetic disorders as well as what? Genetic disorders and, oh, miscarriage. Yeah, there's something else I was thinking. So let's look. We're not just thinking about what stage the egg is in or the pre-egg is in as it uh, waits for the lucky moment where it may or may not finish meiosis. We also are going to take a look at an ovary and look at what's called a follicle. So each individual uh, primary oocyte is sitting inside a structure called a follicle. And in the beginning, they are primordial follicles. So you have 500,000 primary oocytes sitting in a primordial follicle. The follicle you actually will look into a slide of an ovary. It's a mouse ovary or something. And so the, there's, they're a little bit different than ours, just a little bit. But you'll see oocytes, the big cell right here in the middle, and then you'll see it actually surrounded by another layer of little cells. Now you tell me, just looking at this example, what kind of tissue is the follicle that's surrounding the cell. What would you say? Looks like simple squamous epithelium to me, and in fact, that's true. How would I know that? The simple squamous epithelium is how you identify the primordial follicle. So I'm going to have an, a, a pointer pointing to a cell, and I'm going to say, what kind of follicle is this? And if you see simple squamous epithelium surrounding it, then you're going to know that that is a primordial follicle. Every uh, month, my notes here say about 20 primordial follicles begin to develop into primary follicles, about 20. That's, that's pretty generous. I've heard like 12, but that's cool. We can go with 20. 20 primordial follicles, which started out with simple squamous epithelium, start producing the, the lining, the follicle itself. This part is the follicle. This is my actual egg cell or future egg cell. So the follicle grows, adjusts, modifies itself, and is no longer simple squamous epithelium. It becomes uh, cuboidal epithelium. You can see these kind of squarish shape. And that's how you're going to identify a primary follicle. Every month, as you keep going, a few of those primary follicles are going to turn into secondary follicles. Now check out the characteristics here. A secondary follicle, what you're going to see, this space right here is the um, the characteristic, that space that I just put a dot in, it's called an, ant an antrum. The antrum is a fluid-filled space. It marks a secondary follicle. So when you see an antrum, you're going to be like, oh, that must be my secondary follicle. Look, here's a secondary follicle. See my antrum? Here is also an antrum, but we're going to see that that's not actually a secondary follicle. It's too big. The antrum gets filled with fluid, as we know when we fill things with fluid. 
they get bigger. Look at all the tissue surrounding this. We actually are almost creating a whole, uh, an entire, I mean, it's like a little mini organ that's surrounding this individual cell. Lots of energy is going into this thing. That's my secondary um, follicle. Who's sitting inside there? Fantastic. It is still a primary oocyte. We haven't even turned into a secondary oocyte yet. So in all these guys, it's the same primary oocyte just hanging out, already started its meiosis, but certainly is not finishing. Now look. Do you see how we are different now? Look at how this, this is like your quintessential um, mature follicle. And only about one or two follicles are going to make it to mature status in each ovary. They've got a huge antrum. The, the oocyte is now, it's allowed to finish meiosis one. So now it's a secondary oocyte that's sitting inside this mature follicle. Totally fantastic uh, practical question that I could ask on a quiz. And look at all that fluid in the antrum. It's getting a little scary here. The fluid is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Guess what? The fluid keeps increasing. The pressure keeps rising. We only have two or three follicles that have made it this far, they are my only mature follicles. At this point, it's a race. Who's going to explode first? And usually only one of them explodes first because it produced so much fluid that it popped like a zit. And then guess where it goes? You got to be kidding me. Here is my giant secondary oocyte that exploded out of the side of the ovary, and now it's in the body cavity. It's in the abdominal cavity. Oh, no, what are we going to do? Here goes our only egg out into the unknown. Thankfully, your fallopian tubes, my fallopian tubes, and yours if you have two X chromosomes, the fallopian tubes have these fingers called fimbriae. I told you about them already. And they have cilia on them, and they beat the fluid, and they create currents. And they say, come to me, little egg, little secondary oocyte that just exploded like a popped zit out of the ovary. Come this way. It's very lovely in here. We have food for you. We will let you parasitize us. Maybe we will be lucky enough to have 500,000 suitors to see which one you like. Come on in. And indeed, most of the time, the egg makes it into the fallopian tube. And now the story isn't over. Of course not. And this is just a piece of the story because you know it gets crazier, and we'll talk about that in physio. The follicle used to be just this follicle, but then it gets like glandular. It turns into an endocrine gland. Kind of the whole thing's an endocrine gland. We won't talk about that too much. But basically it turns into a structure called the corpus luteum. Only the exploded follicle turns into a corpus luteum. And then the corpus luteum produces hormones that last. It will survive for 12 days unless that little parasite does get lucky and embeds in your uterus, and then it starts to produce hormones that keep the corpus luteum alive, and then it'll stay alive for like three months until the placenta takes over. How cool is that? Now, you are going to get to look at slides, and you will identify all our different follicles, and you will tell me the stage that the cell is in in each of them. That's easy, isn't it? The last thing that we are going to do is talk about the different homologous uh, gross anatomy structures that we find in between males and females. Where did we come from? Where did we come from? Don't answer that question. I'll be right back.